called now to be baptized, may by the power of the Holy Spirit, they'll increase in the knowledge and love of you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Dearly beloved, we are about to receive this child into the church by baptism. Let us recall both the promise and the warning of our Lord. This warning is that those who shall cause any of these little ones to stumble, it were better that a millstone be hung around their necks and that they be drowned in the ocean. And the promise is that those who receive little children in his name receive the Lord himself. His promise of grace is boundless. The promise of the Holy Spirit is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off. He died for all. And all are in need and within reach of his grace and his mercy. We are given the assurance that this child is also here to that grace and a partaker of these promises. And that he who once took little children in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them, will likewise favorably receive this child and give to her the Holy Spirit that she may become a partaker of his heavenly kingdom. Let us therefore hear the words of institution as recorded in the first gospel. Jesus came and spoke to the eleven disciples saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Amen. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you that you have created all things and made us in your image. Be present with us, Father, in the power of the Holy Spirit, that this child now to be baptized with this water may die to sin and be raised to new life in Christ. Amen. The members of the church who will receive this child, I ask that you make your promise and pledge. Members of the body of Christ, who are now in his name to receive this child, Will you so maintain the common life of worship and service that she and all the children among you may grow in grace and in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord? Please be seated. And now to... The parents first. In counseling, I went over each question with you and explained to you why the questions will be asked of you this morning and also to ask you to make your pledge. You have brought this your child to be baptized and to receive her again to be trained in the doctrines, privileges, and duties of the Christian religion, I ask you, therefore, will you provide for this your child a Christian home of love and faithfulness? Answer? Okay. The second question, will you help her by your words, prayers, an example to renounce evil and to put her trust in Jesus Christ as Savior? Will you train and encourage her towards confirmation in the membership of the church 
and to serve Christ in the world. To the God parents who have come. And uh, the God parents who are part of the council also. And we have, as a part of the God parent team, the creative role secretary in the church, who is a person who keeps contact with the parents and God parents. And she too answer as a part of the body who assist in the upbringing of these children. Will you who have come to support these parents help them in the Christian nurture of this child? Let us pray. Almighty and immortal God, aid of all who are in need, the helper of all who come to you for refuge, the life of those who believe on the resurrection of the dead, we call upon you for this child, whom we bring to you in this holy sacrament. Receive her, O Lord, as you have promised by your well-beloved Son, saying, Ask, and you shall have. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. So give to us who ask. Let us who seek find. Open the gate to us who knock. That this child may become and ever remain Christ's true disciple. And may at last attain to the eternal kingdom which you have promised by Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, shared at Nazareth the life of an earthly home, Bless, we pray you, the home of this child, and grant wisdom and understanding to all who have the care of her, that she may grow up in your constant fear and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful God and Heavenly Father, give wisdom and grace to the parents of this child, that they may train her and all your offspring in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and in the truths of your word. Through Jesus Christ, our only mediator and redeemer. Amen. And the question for you, What do you request for this child? Name the child. baptism we receive this child into the fellowship of Christ church and pray that she may not be ashamed to hold fast the faith of Christ crucified to fight against evil and to be a preserver as Christ faithful soldier and servant to her life's end. Amen. The Lord bless you Caitlin. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Lord, 
Grant that the parents of this child may have grace to set before her the example of godly living and by their prayers, Christian instructions, and wise counsel be ministers of God to her for good. Grant that this church, Ebenezer Methodist Church, may be so endowed with heavenly wisdom that it may nurture the children received by holy baptism into your name and by constant care and vigilance Guide them in the way of truth and peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. You may return to you. God bless you, Caitlin. The responsive reading is from Psalm 4. It is printed in the order of service. We read alternate verses. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Please be seated. The epistle is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. <clears throat> See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins and no one who sins has either seen him or known him little children let no one deceive you everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous this is the word of the lord thanks be to god
We thank the reader for leading us in the responsive reading and the epistle. Invite us to join together in the singing of the hymn, for him, the hymn song. And this is one that I learned when I was a little boy in Stan Creek. It is in, printed in the insert of the bulletin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die on Calvary from sin to set me free. One day he's coming back. What glory that will be. Wonderful his name to me. I invite you to remain seated as we sing the hymn song together. You know that one, Sister? Okay, let us sing it then. You remain seated. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary from sin to set me free. One day he's coming back, what glory that will be. Wonderful his love to me. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus says to me, Counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace is he, saving me, keeping me from my sin and shame. Wonderful is my redeemed, I'll praise his name, for we'll be dwelling together, how happy we will be. Through all eternity, for we'll be dwelling together. My Lord, I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by his, I will. Uh, I love him better every day. I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by his side, I will abide. I love him better every day. Amen. I thank the organist for the sweet accompaniment. I know I have heard this here at Ebenezer Primary School, and it is good when we can be reminded of that love of God through his son, Jesus Christ, especially at this time. I invite the children who are amongst us to please stand where you are at this time. I have a thought to share with the children, so I will invite the boys and the girls who are attending worship to stand and right where you are because we don't want to gather too close up, but I want you to listen to me as I share this thought with you this morning and something that you can take home with you. My thought for today How do we know that Jesus was who he said he is? How do we know that Jesus was who he said he is? And as I ask that question, boys, because I see all boys here this morning, I also have to ask you, if I'm asking this question, who, how do we know? That Jesus was who he said he is. I can ask you the same question. How do people know who you are? How would you be able to identify yourself if you go to another village and somebody stop and ask you, Boy, where you come from? And especially if they are suspicious of you. 
how would you be able to identify yourself? When you become an adult, there are ways in which you can identify yourself. If when the police stop me when I'm driving and they ask me, sir, can I ask you to identify yourself? I would take out my license that I have here. I always make sure I walk with it. I would take out my license. I would pull it out. And they would examine my license. And they, will make, they, were, they would make sure that, first of all, it's updated. And they would look at my face. And they would look at my picture on the license and they would say good enough sir you can go because I have identified myself by the way of my license that the government issued to me if I should go to the bank and I need to sign a check or I need to deposit a check. There are times, depending on the bank, they will ask you for an ID. They would say, sir, can I see your ID? And so I would present them with my social security card, which I also have. I keep all of them here. I hope nobody take it from me. I have everything packaged together, and so I will show them my social security card as a form of identity, and then they would be able to allow me to cash my check or do business with them. There are times, of course, when I go and I shop at Publix. And when I go to Publix, there is a membership card. And I made sure that I bought a membership card. So when they asked me for my membership card, I would pull out this card. And I would show them my membership card. And then they would swipe the membership card. It is a form of identity. And when... They are, we are asked who we are, we are supposed to have some kind of identity. And uh, based on the scripture passages read this morning, we have an identity. And based on the gospel reading that we will read, that I will read, lead us in reading Shortly, we have an identity. Our identity is that we are witnesses of Jesus Christ. We are witnesses of Jesus Christ. And so, when you are a child of God, you identify yourself by being a witness. And so this morning, we will learn a little bit more in the sermon about how you can continue to identify yourself. We might not have an identification card such as the ones I have just showed you, but we have a mark. Each one of you, the three of you here, you have a mark that you are a witness of Jesus Christ. Not only are you a child of Jesus Christ, you are a witness. And in this sermon, I will share with us what it means to be a witness of Jesus Christ. I invite you to, I invite all of us to bow our heads in prayer this morning for children, especially children who at this time are with us, these three boys who are with us in this place of worship. And we can pray for them. We can pray for their families. We can pray for the witnesses they are called upon to be. 
We can pray for the institution they attend so that as they are a part of that institution, that school, they can be witnesses in their school. We pray for children who are a part of our Sunday school. We pray for children who are a part of our primary school and our high schools. We pray for children who are disadvantaged and children who have no way of witnessing for Jesus because they do not know Jesus as they should. Lord, we bring our prayers to you this morning on behalf and petitioning you for children. May they come to know you as the Jesus the Christ who died on the cross for them and saved them. We pray, gracious God, that from a world of sin and darkness and walking in darkness, you will shield them. Hear our prayers for them this morning as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, boys. I invite us to share in the gospel reading for this morning as it comes from the gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 24. And I read from verse 36b through to verse 48. Your response. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Jesus himself stood amongst them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do you doubt? Arise, and why does doubt arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead and on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. May 
the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Be seated, please. I choose to preach from here, where the fan is behind me, and the fan can cool me off a little bit, rather than over that side, where there is no fan. So I will choose some, I will preach from here. Let us share together in the spoken word of God. I have entitled this sermon for this morning, You Must Be a Witness. You Must Be a Witness. And the sermon topic does not equate itself with a particular church or denomination that goes by the same name. The topic of the sermon, you must be a witness, equates itself instead with those who experienced the resurrection and those who heard firsthand about the resurrection. The witness further is one who believes and one who shares in the glorious experience and truth from the Bible that indeed they believe that there was a resurrection. The Gospel of Luke records and captures the glorious events through the eyes of Mary Magdalene, Mary of Magdala, as she is known. Let us this morning examine how Jesus himself witnessed to Cleophas and the other gentlemen on the road to Emmaus. That was a part of the reading last week. And also this week, as Jesus appeared to his disciples, as he had been appearing to a number of persons and using the specific words, peace be with you, peace be with you. This was the way in which Jesus greeted them. This was the way in which Jesus greeted those who were behind closed doors. This was the way in which Jesus greeted Cleophas and the other gentleman who walked with him on the road to Emmaus. This was the way in which Jesus again greeted the disciples as they were behind closed doors. Afraid of the Romans, he said to them again, peace be with you. There are three things that we note from this peace and the way in which he greeted them. First of all, they were able to see him. That was the first thing. Secondly, they were able to see him. And thirdly, they saw him, but did not recognize him. They saw him, but did not recognize who he was. The man on the road to Emmaus who walked alongside him. After, it was after Jesus was with them for a while. And as they looked closer at him, and as they listened to him, and just as he was about to leave them, it was at that point they came to a recognition of who Jesus was. But they knew in their hearts that he had been crucified because this was a part of the experience that had taken place 
over the past few days as they even shared as they were conversing on the road to Emmaus. Of course, they recognized that they were not seeing a ghost. And even the disciples, as he appeared to them, they recognized that they were not necessarily seeing a ghost because for those of us who know about ghosts, we cannot touch ghosts. Ghost doesn't eat. It is said that the dead must come to life again in the person of Jesus Christ. Indeed, the tomb had been opened and the glorious resurrection had taken place. But sad to say, the minds of the disciples were still closed and they had not yet recognized who Jesus was. We are told in verse 45 of the chapter that was read to us, then he opened his, their minds, then he opened their minds to understand what the scripture was saying. The first point we learn in being a witness is that the resurrection shattered the human understanding of who God is. The resurrection shattered the human understanding of who God is. God, through his son, Jesus Christ, was flesh and bone, hand and feet, as he testified to them. He ate broiled fish. Therefore, he was a human. His hands showed it. In addition to being human, Jesus was also resurrected and had undergone the process of a resurrected body. And this is what we have to understand and appreciate about Jesus this morning. He was not only human, he was also spiritual. He united the visible and the invis invisible. He united matter and spirit. He united humanity and divinity. On the one hand, Jesus had a real body. On the other hand, he was not subject to natural things like you and I. The truth is that Christ's body is a new and a different body. Different in reality. And in order to appreciate and understand the resurrection, it is important that you hear what I preach this morning. And the second point I wish to make is this. The degree to which we bind ourselves to the created order is the degree to which we are unable to see and view the resurrection or the resurrected Christ in the world. If we are only looking at natural things, we will not be able to see the supernatural. If our minds are only geared towards the natural things, we will not be able to appreciate and understand the supernatural which took place in the resurrection. There are times when we bind ourselves only to the natural. We bind ourselves to fear. The fear of seeing only the ghosts. We bind ourselves to the sorrows of our life. To the losses we sometimes suffer. To the unwilling or the unnatural destructions in our lives and uh, because we bind ourselves to those things we cannot see the resurrection we cannot appreciate the resurrection sometimes it is our unwillingness to trust in god as we should to grow in god and to change 
we bind ourselves to the natural created order and lose our recognition of who God is in us. We lose sight of the sacred and that is opposite to the resurrection. The resurrected life in Jesus reveals that all of creation is filled with God's goodness. That all of creation is loaded with holiness and divinity. We need to know that nothing can bind us or supersede the grace that comes through God's unconditional love in the person of Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. Who was resurrected? Sisters and brothers, God longs to open our minds to speak to us, to impart his word in us, to reveal himself in us through the resurrection. It is not about academics and intellectual things as the Sadducees who were a sect of the Jews wanted people to believe that it was about their intelligence. And it was about how they could intelligently explain the resurrection. It is not about that. It is about our faith and our belief and our witness in knowing that Jesus Christ rose from the dead because we did not only hear about it from the disciples, we did not only hear about it from those who were witnesses, but because we have the scripture, we have the scripture, we believe also that we are witnesses. Amen? The scripture tells us that we are witnesses because we read, we have read of the resurrection. We are witnesses or we can become witnesses based on the fact that we have read enough and we know about the resurrection from this good book, the Bible. I have to hold it up like Billy Graham. Our relationship with God can only become meaningful when we are able to preach of that resurrection. The relationship with God as witnesses will change us. I want to declare this morning that you too can be witnesses of Jesus. You too are witnesses to these many events that took place in the life of Jesus. You must be able to live it. You must be able to tell of it. You must be able to become a witness. The resurrection life is yours through Jesus Christ. You are witnesses, sisters and brothers. Go out and tell. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, this morning as counselor, you're wonderful, you're mighty, you, you are the Prince of Peace. And this morning, we can go and tell of you. Make us living witnesses today. Like Nicodemus, O oh God. May we be able to 
live your word not only by night but by day may we be able to sing of you in our hearts in our minds and with our voices hear us we pray in the name of Jesus Christ amen I invite us to sing together prayerfully the song beneath the cross not beneath the cross of Jesus but a man named Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night and to the tune of beneath the cross of Jesus let us try to sing this hymn song for ourselves not for anybody else but for ourselves that we may not only come to know Jesus by night but by day and every day of our lives invite the organist to lead us as we sing the hymn song together
notices and the announcements. The notices can be found in the bulletin. If you turn to the back of it, and there are, are some meetings that we are to attend to. But I want to go first to the service this evening at Wesley Church. Recognition service, service for Sister Brenda Armstrong this evening at 5 o'clock at Wesley Church. And we are all asked to please attend if, if it's possible and to give Sister Brenda the support that she needs. I think she's known to all of us because she serves in many different areas. And so this evening at Wesley, at 5 o'clock, the recognition service for her will be held. And then we have some meetings. Ebenezer, the pastoral and congregational meetings, April 21st at the church at 5.30 p.m. Those persons who are affected, please take note. And then we have the Ebenezer Anniversary Service coming up on May the 2nd. And that special service will be at 4 p.m. Please take note. There is an activity, I think, that is being planned. I don't have the paper with me. This should be somewhere about last week. We got an insert which asks us to... Yes, we got this last week. It says it marks 165th anniversary, and we are asking our members to have pictures of loved ones who have toiled and passed on before, serving here at Ebenezer by sending your pictures in. And during the service, I think they want to have it on the screen showing it as a slideshow. It says the service will be live streamed so loved ones at home and abroad can view it. A donation of $10 will be asked for this venture. Please send your picture and donation to Brother Adrian. That's Brother Adrian right there. Or to Sister Marge Castillo. Or Alison Kane. By email or whichever way possible. And we are asking it to be in no later than the 26th of April. So we are asking all of us to please make this year anniversary 165 years of witness. And I think it's 34, 7 and, yes, 34 anniversary of this building. And so we are asking for your support. Usually what we do around that time, I'm not even... Pastor didn't give me anything, so if I say something wrong, blame me. We usually give, for, whether you choose to give $165 for each year of witness, or you choose to give a dollar for each year for this building that is here, you make your choice of how you would want to do that. And we've been doing that for quite a while now, so you can make a choice of whether you would want to give $165, or if you can just give it 34 and if whatever you can give, we appreciate it. So we are asking for your support. And then, sympathy. We extend deep sympathy to Sister Elsie Konaki and family on the passing of her grandson, Taris Castillo. The funeral service will be in the U.S. next week. And we are praying that God will grant strength and consolation to the bereaved family. And may the soul of our departed brother rest in peace and rise in glory. And also, by now, I guess we might have heard of the death of a um, brother and past teacher, Lloyd Neal. He was a teacher for many years. He was living up in Borel Boom area for the past few years. His funeral will take place on Tuesday. Let us remember to pray for our sick and shut-in members and friends, and where possible, let us visit them. 
May Jesus, the great physician, touch all who are unwell with his healing grace. We lift up Sister Myrna Griffith, Sister Elsie Konaki, and Brother Claude Stewart, and any other whose names are not mentioned. Please lift up, especially Sister Myrna Griffith. She had to be rushed into the doctor this week, this past week. She's at home right now, but she's still um, not doing too well. And so we are asking you to please lift her up in prayers. Those are the announcements as are listed here. Do we have any birthdays? Sister Donna, there are some that I know well, you know, so they can't tell me anything. I, I, can't, I can't get the name out of the names in the print. Okay. Okay. We have tomorrow. I'm going to do that today. Anybody else? Their birthdays are tomorrow. Let us sing for them, please. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, we love you. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Happy birthday. Do we have any anniversaries? Any anniversaries? No anniversaries? Let us say thanks to all of you for coming out this morning and for being a part of this service. Thanks to Sister Ida at the organ. And thanks to our technicians here. We give God praise and thanks. You see what? We talk about COVID, but through COVID, we get some good things too. True, a lot of bad things, but we get some good things. We are getting improvement and all of that. Amen. And so we give God thanks for the good things that are happening from COVID and trust that we will also grow spiritually. This the um, usher and the sexton. We give you thanks. And to our pastor, Bishop, we thank you for your message. We thank you for fighting the good fight of faith and keeping us grounded. God bless you. The offering for the work of God will now be received. The choir will sing.
Let us pray. We give you but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O Lord, from thee. Lord God, you have made us responsible stewards. In our giving this morning, we give not only this child back to you, who we have received in baptism, but we give to you our gifts and offerings. We pray, gracious God, that they may be blessed, and that through these gifts, you will continue to bless, to bless the work of your church, to expand and to increase the work of your church, that these gifts through us, O oh God, may grow and increase five and tenfold and a hundredfold, and that your blessings upon us will be the same. So bless these gifts and bless us to your honor and your glory, we pray. Amen. Be seated, please. Let us, sisters and brothers, before we attend to our prayers of intercession and the Lord's Prayer, like Sister Teacher Lois, I want to continue to extend a word of gratitude. The last time I preached here, it was remiss of me, and I'm just getting used to it that the technical team was here, and that, as usual, we normally say thanks to Sister Collins, and we say thanks to the caretaker, but they were right in front of me, and I never said thanks. But here is a ministry, this is a new ministry that has come into the life of the church. And Mr. Crawford, just put up your hand, Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford, a member of the church here, sometimes he knows I make a mistake and call him by another name. But he saw that this should be a part of his ministry. And he has taken it upon himself to assemble this team. And these are the reliable young people. Um, all of them, the four of them you see here. They are, I call them the faithful four. Very reliable. And it crossed my mind. I wonder what will happen when one of them leave. And yet we know that they have to leave because of education. But I worry about the day when they will have to leave. Not that I don't want them to leave. But I worry about the day when they will have to leave. And so... They have started this ministry, they, they, each one of them, as a time of their stewardship, they will be here um, every Sunday, and that sacri sacrifice, you know, especially when you ask young people to come half hour before church begins, and to set up. But they're sacrificing themselves, and Mr. Crawford with them, who is leading the team. We want to express thanks to them as... Sister Lois indicated in the notice that we would want to further extend this ministry when we hope that during the time of the anniversary, if you can help to support the church by perhaps um, making your contribution with your $10, and if there's somebody in memory that you would like us to remember, they will put it on the screen and it will be shown. And this is the way in which we encourage the ministry and the life of the church. We're hoping in time to come to get back the, the drum set. Um, but if you want to donate towards the drum set, and if you want to no donate towards the air condition, I see all of us fanning this morning. I decided that I would have to take off my gown this morning. I'm hoping when the air condition begins and is put up, which we hope will be soon, that we will not have to be fanning, um, Godmother, the way you're fanning, that you will come in and you will just relax and listen to the sermon. Amen? So we know it is sacrificial giving, but we will ask that you try as much as possible to give to these 
ministries. Let us then express our thanks. Um, Sister Lois has already also shared those we should be sharing our prayer for this morning, those who are sick and those who are shut in, those who have been in the hospital recently. We want to bear them up in our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, from the strength of our voices, we bring our prayers of intercession to you. We pray, O oh God, for those who even now you are speaking to for recovery from illness, from any other recovery that is taking place. We lift them up to you. Take charge of each one of them. That even in the comfort of a hospital or in the comfort of their rooms, you may continue to minister to them and that they may continue to look to you. We lift up those who have recently been in hospital. Sister Myrna, Teacher Marilyn, and all others who are sick. We lift up those who are depressed. Those who are oppressed. Not only in our country, but in other countries. We come before you this morning and we lift up the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Those whose lives have been disrupted and affected by the volcano. We lift up the neighboring islands affected by the dust. We bring to you the Methodist Church in Belize and Honduras and the ministry we offer, our leadership. Especially this morning, we lift up to you Sister Brenda Armstrong as she prepares to be commissioned as a lay preacher. May she continue to be a witness for you even through the spoken word. Lord, in your mercy. The Lord's prayer as we sing. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. On the earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us all our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen, amen, it shall be so. Amen, amen, it shall be so.
Give me courage when the world is rough. Keep me loving through the world is tough. Leap and sing in all I do. Keep me traveling along with you. The hymn 457. One more step along the way I go. One more step along the way I go. One more step along the world I go. From the old things to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. Receive the benediction. Go and live with God's spirit within you. Go and reach out to all those who you meet. Go and help others to experience the sense of belonging that you already know in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.